having argued that the son is better than the servants, he then changes his argument. And in chapter 7 to 10, we have a remarkable argument that the substance is better than the shadows. Now then, have you ever read Daddy Longlegs or seen the film? A favorite romance, that isn't it? Real women's magazine story. Rags to Riches. Now, he, it's the story of a little orphan girl in an orphanage. And uh, she knows that there is a wealthy man who provides for the orphanage and provides for the children. And one day she sees his shadow on a wall. And it's a, an elongated shadow with tremendously long legs because of the position of the light. And she calls the shadow Daddy Long Legs. And, and for years she dreams of this Daddy Long Legs shadow. Then one day she meets him and falls in love and he falls in love. Oh, it's, you know, it's a real you know, five Kleenex tissue story. But once she's got him, she stops thinking about the shadow altogether. Because the substance is better than the shadow. What would you think of her going back to the shadow on the wall and trying to kiss the shadow? How crazy when you've got him. Now, you see, in the Old Testament, we have an awful lot of shadows of Jesus. Uh, some people call them types. Have you heard the word typology? Types. Well, Hebrews calls them shadows. I much prefer that word. It's as if Jesus cast his shadow back into the Old Testament. But a shadow is always distorted. Never gives you quite the clear picture, the way the light is. I don't know if I'm casting a shadow. Yes, I am down there. There's Daddy short legs down there. <laughs> but you see, the shadow is only a shadow. You can tell something about me from the shadow, but not very much. You can describe something, but not you, if you know me. You know, if you'd only ever seen that, you would know I was real. You know a little about me, but what's a shadow? Now then, when you read the Old Testament, you're actually reading about the shadows of Jesus all the way. There's a concept for you. There's a key. When you read the book of Leviticus, you're looking at Jesus' shadow. Now that's a key that really unlocks it. When you look at the sacrifices, that's the shadow of the cross. The shadow of the sacrifice he made for sin. When you look at the animals that were sacrificed, it's a shadow of Jesus. The lamb, the Passover lamb, is a shadow of Jesus. It tells you a little about Jesus. But, oh, we don't need to look at the lamb anymore. We've got him. We've got the substance. Or in typology language, we've got the antitype of the type. But that sounds a bit clumsy, doesn't it? But shadow of the substance, we understand that. We've got the real thing now. And the shadows of Jesus you can see in the priesthood. You can see in the covenant. You can see in the sacrifices. But the substance is so much better than the shadows. The shadow was actually the priesthood of Aaron and sons. But Jesus is much more clearly shadowed in the order of Melchizedek, that, that mysterious priest and king combined who reigned over Jerusalem and gave bread and wine to Abraham. What a shadow. And so the Old Testament is full of Jesus' shadows. Is that a new thought to you? Probably not new, but a new way of putting it. But it really enables you to look back into the Old Testament and see so much shadow of Jesus. Just one example. How old do you think Isaac was when Abraham sacrificed him? Have you ever thought about that? You remember when Abraham nearly killed him on the altar. What would you think he was? Twelve? Eighteen? Do you know, every Jew will tell you the truth. He says he was in his early thirties. And every Jewish picture of that shows a full-grown man who could easily have overcome his dear old dad, but submitted to him. And it's because we've divided Genesis into chapters that we miss the very next incident in the next chapter which talks of Sarah's death and tells us how old she was when she died and how old Isaac was. It's a much clearer shadow of Jesus when you realize that Isaac was around 33. And when you realize that that mount, mountain, Mount Maria, was the very mountain on which Jesus died on a cross. And then when you see that God said, stop. An angel stopped Abraham. Isaac must not be killed. And when 
when Abraham turned round, there was a ram with its head encircled in thorns. Do you see that shadow? That was what was to be sacrificed on that mountain. And years, centuries later, the Lamb of God had his head caught in the thorns and was offered on Mount Maria. Shadows. And from those shadows you can look forward to the cross. But the shadows only tell you something.